Gomez. Walto makes a run ahead of it. Burkamp suddenly changed pace through the centre. It's Burkamp! That's magnificent! The move, and then this, which left Dabby's ass totally stranded. Welcome to a Burkamp Wonderland and Arsenal podcast. We are here to have a talk and discussion about the correctly predicted 3-0 victory from moi, Deacon. <laughs> and I'm here with Danny. That was a nice little starting segment. That was not too bad. There we are. Well, the only proof you've got that you predicted 3-0 was the WhatsApp you sent me uh, yes. this, this is afternoon and I've deleted it. So your oh, prediction right. is null and void. Right, okay. I was, uh, I was very confident about the 3-0. I'm really happy that we've not conceded for over seven hours of away football. Um, incredibly impressive from the Arsenal. Uh, we're just, we're on a roll. We've, we had that little, um, we went through a 20 mile per hour speed zone at yep. City, and then yep. we've gone back up to you know to national speed limit. We're back up, yep. and we're we're giving it some. So I'm very happy to have the discussion that we're about to have. What a game! What a game! Much better than the uh, the sort of more chilled, reserved performances. You know, the second half was just absolutely magical. So, um, Danny, we've got some people in the chat. Should we say hello yep. to some people? Go on. Uh, what we got here? Who we got? Who we got? So Jimmy H32. Oh, half time comment. Half time comment. Why is it when we play Brighton, we always make it hard for ourselves? Well, they are to be I'll be honest with you, Danny. Brighton played really, really well. Their defensive structure was actually actually quite impressive. But then, you know, that's what you get from Deserbi. He's a he's a highly uh, rated manager who is wanted by a lot of big clubs at the moment. It's gonna be interesting to see where his loyalty lies next season. And uh, yeah, we saw a, a, a pretty damning a damn good performance from Brighton today, Danny. Uh, what did you make of Brighton very quickly? What did you think? Uh, a determined side. Josh did the, pod, yep. the the preview show with me last night and he said they've got a load of players out. They've lost once at home this season. They are we one go. of the best teams at there you home. Go. I thought so. And, and he said he wasn't really expecting much because uh, we're brilliant and they've got so many injuries and their best players have been sold. And it's a really hard time. It's a transitional period for yep. them. Yeah, yep. I, I think... Short-term gains, selling all your best players. Long-term um, results of that is you're you're going to have a hard season. But I mean, are they still? No, they got knocked out of Europe, didn't they? Yes. By um by another team. That's how football well, works. We appreciate Brighton for selling us the players like Ben White and Trossard, who I'm going to be quite Indeed. confident in thinking that neither of them are now Brighton favourites of any kind. <laughs> Uh, it's always yeah. funny when you see a player come back from one club to go back to their club that it were just before to kind of see and gauge the reception that they receive and how they act on the pitch as well. But I thought the Ben White and Trossard one was quite showing. Uh, Peter Little, controlled or not to exerting plenty of gas in the tank for midweek. Uh, Bayern, yeah, that's obviously something we need to be worrying about. Sire, I thought first half was good. Second half performance was wow. Phil Macker, good evening. Hope Josh didn't get thrown out for celebrating in the home crowd. Was he there, Danny? The man himself was he was he at the Brighton game? Well, at the well, Brighton game tonight. Well, Josh was there, and yeah. I think uh, Simon, our very uh, own Simon Collins, was there. I tell you, what, I hate Facebook. Why is it such an awkward twat? Can't post. Can't post. <sighs> anyway, this is doing its best to try and wind me up. Uh, but right. yeah, he was there, and uh, he met Mr. Collins, and they had a little chat. So um, yeah, it was good. Yeah, and I uh, yeah, fantastic stuff. Renry, good evening. Good, great performance from the whole team, notably Havertz. United to beat Scousers tomorrow, question mark. We can only hope and pray, can't we? But yeah, Havertz was incredible tonight. Phil Mack, anyone relying on United to beat the Scouse scum is mad. Evening all from everybody, Englishman in Canada. Phil, uh, hello, ladies. Nice. Mask Gunner, hello. UK. You can start. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> giving us the heads up. Pr appreciated. Paul Nell, not Neil. Oi, oi. Hey. FA, let's get ready to rumble. Yeah, have also the, got the their ball is rolling. lined up when, when you get the, a moment. Fantastic. Once you finished all this. Yeah, no worries. We'll quickly just jump through everyone. LF on Twitter. It's only me finding it weird to watch Arsenal and not stress. Yeah, it is very nice, isn't it? It's like you kind of seek stress um, at the moment. It's like you're like, like it's, I'm, you're so used to, it's like you're so used to it. It's muscle memory for you to be stressed when you watch an Arsenal game, especially when we're playing out from the back. And then, you know, the game starts quite wobbly. I thought Brighton started stronger within the first sort of 10 minutes. 
Raya had a few moments as well, but overall we kind of got into the seat. We got comfortable and it was pretty much chill from there. Phil will save that for later. Tom Andrew, oi, oi. Peter Coulson, nice kick about for the boys. Little uh, <laughs> nod to Tony there. The man who's going to be making his debut for Real Madrid next season. It's going to be funny. And in all the numbers, great result. Everyone played their part. They did. Who's going uh, to make this debut for Real Madrid? Who was that? Tony. Who? Tony, because he... Uh, you know, oh, yes. Yes. Good luck, mate. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Le Snow, Arsenal are cooking at the moment, and it's all gourmet. Very nice. LF on Twitter, Danny, I also had two boiled eggs on toast. for It's nice. Uh, um, we've got Peter Coulson. Stadium's empty every, empty everywhere we go. Um, and we've got a few people here. Um, that is Clinton Jones. Hello. I haven't really been, uh, believed that they, uh, that they can beat City to the title all season, but after a few matches... Really starting to believe that's exactly what we want to hear. Uh, Fred and Watered, like the name of new people here. Yeah, it's new lovely people. So I'm going to say hello to you all. Fantastic hello. result. Jesus was fantastic, even without his shooting boots. Zinchenko isn't as good as he thinks he is. Was caught out multiple yes. times. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a chinwag about it. Uh, the man himself. Uh, yes. And in all the numbers, John Brooks is a joke of a referee. He really wanted to excuse to uh, excuse to book White at the end. Pathetic. And then Phil. Is on to on Facebook. Sorry, um, hello from Phil's, Facebook, Phil's, ladies. Phil's been a bad boy. Oh right, okay. Well, he seems we horrible to Josh in the YouTube comments. So, uh, yeah, might have to might have to put him in a timeout for two minutes. Phil, bad man. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else we got here? Phil, loving it, loving it, loving it. Renry, today's three point two three xg, the highest Brighton have conceded since the current manager joined. Uh, Ray Anderson, good evening. Told my wife that I was so calm, even one nil up. That's Ray in sunny Jamaica. What's the weather like, Ray? I always ask you. Oh, just... I know. Lucky man. Peter Little here. Did either of you see the rumours about De Gea coming to reply? What? He, I actually looked up his stats last night. He hasn't been he's a anybody. Solid he, no, he's, he's, a like... solid, he's a solid keeper. He's a solid and keeper. He has the fifth most appearances for Man United, I read. So what's the rumour? Uh, rumours about him replacing Ramsdale. So being our backup keeper, I'm going to tell you what, I tell you what, not bad. I think that's a pretty decent he, little he's shout. Good for that is nice. He's, he's good. Well, yeah, dude. He, I think he'd actually, I think he'd actually, I'll tell you what, I'd, I'd be interested to see Arsenal could move for former Man United keeper, David De Gea as replacement for Aaron Ramsdale would be a very interesting move. I think I like that. I like that. Danny, well, I don't know about it, you, but I like it. It's befounded you. That's not even a word, is it? What is it? Uh, compounded? No. Dumb, dumbfounded. 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 Yeah. dumbfounded me. I'll tell you what, it was a curveball, and I've managed, to, I've managed to just clip the yeah. end of the ball. You yeah. know, and it's complete, I've completely sliced it, but I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the moment. So we'll top see how, where that goes. Again, by the way. Sorry? We're top of the league again, by the way. I know. I'm very happy about that. You know, hopefully United get the result tomorrow, and we'll see where we go. Oh, on, United. Danny predictions let's see what everybody predicted just saying again once again clarifying yeah. i predicted three nil just going to put it out there leave it to the leave it to the side there okie dokie share screen maximize because it's not very big there's uh there's me i mine and josh aren't on here because uh i was trying to cut it down and it uh, nearly ran out of time right here we go brady's banana has gone two nil for arsenal Ooh. paul nil not nil has gone three one the arsenal Oops. Barry Bryan, 2-1 the Arsenal. Oh. Pete Colson, 3-1 the oh. Arsenal. Hanchumi, 1-0 the Arsenal. Colin Addy, 3-1 the Ooh. Arsenal. Patrick Carlson, 3-0 hey. the Arsenal. Hey! Little, 4-2 the Arsenal. Mr. Bob Lex, 2-0 the Arsenal. Stefan Selby, 3-1 the Arsenal. Franklin, 3-0 to hey. Arsenal. Sai off his trolley, Brighton 5, <laughs> Arsenal 1. Travis Hall has gone 3-1 the Arsenal. Matt D'Souza, 2-1 the Arsenal. Formerly Noza has gone a Desmond 2-2-2-2. Two, 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 two. <laughs> Barry Bryan, 2-1 the Arsenal. Avon, not Teddington, has gone 1-1. One, one. Mm. Stefan has gone 3-1 the Arsenal. Demsek has gone 2-0 the Arsenal. Archangel, 2-0 the Arsenal. Sir Alan Bastard, MP, 3-1 the Arsenal. Tony K, 3-0 the Arsenal. Hey. And um, Mosea has gone 3-0 the Arsenal. Oh, wow. BX has gone 3-1. Well, there you go. Oh, lot, I'll tell you what, Four a lot of people you. got that correct. It Correct. That was fantastic stuff. I do have to call out, though, Danny. A lot of people yes. put that we lost a clean sheet. What the fuck's that all about? Uh, hate, hate you realise who hate. we are, right? Hate is going to hate. It's ridiculous. We haven't conceded a goal since um, just after World War II. 
it's been a very long time, guys, that we've since we've conceded a goal, especially on the road. I think you need to give us a little bit more credit, boys and girls. But, you know, it is what you it is. You saw a little insight there. I often send videos to Sean and her mum in our WhatsApp group. I laugh at my own nonsense. You could hear there, I'm laughing at my own comments because I think I'm funny. And you lot must must go, what's he talking about? Because oh, I think it's funny. I laugh at myself and that's how unfunny it is. It's just wrong, isn't it? But you saw a little bit of an insight there into how my mind works. I, I laugh at myself. 32 degrees, Danny, in, in where is that? Jamaica? Yeah. Yeah, it's, 32 uh, degrees centigrade. That's uh, Which is about 100. It's 24 Fahrenheit here, centigrade. Yeah, it's been, I'll tell you what, Danny, it's been a warm day. It's been a warm day, but it's Not been uh, overcast. It's very overcast. It's been terrible. Um, here. Windy, rain, nightmare. Oh, I nearly I nearly went got my suntan cream out. It's been very windy, 30 plus degrees, but no rain today. So I'm enjoying the, the little break on that one. Rancid Pumpkin, what a great win. We'll just hey, see the final few comments while, here. Sir? Here we go. Peter Coulson here. Saka on Sky R starting. I was struggling, but as long as I've got two legs, I'll be out there. That's not the greatest comment I want to read. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, and uh, Paul Nell, I, I forgot we have our defence. Of course, you clearly do. You clearly, clearly do. Shall we have a look at the lineup then, Danny? What did you, uh, yes, what did you make I... of the, uh, the lineup? Um, we've got it here on the screen for people. It's been often rumoured, mainly by us, the, the future of Jesus may well be loosely as a left winger because that's where Martinelli plays. He's, he, oh, Martinelli's been a little bit off form lately. He's not been the, the kind of um, um, end product that we're getting from Saka on the other side. So I thought Jesus might come in and Havertz to play through the middle. I think you see quite a lot of Havertz dropping deep and Jesus coming into the centre of the in, in the centre of the park and then diving, which which he loves to do. But we, we plenty of people have said that that could be Jesus's future. And did you think it looked like his future today? I think he offers something different to Martinelli in the style of play. Um, Jesus has got that hold up ability, whereas Martinelli's got that more of a direct play, but he's also got the ability to come and play on the byline using his weak foot. So both Martinelli and Jesus offer something different. It is very interesting to see Jesus play in this particular position, even keeping Martinelli out the side, as we've said, or you've said um, quite correctly, that he's uh, he's off the boil at the moment, Martinelli, especially with the injuries. There's no point really rushing him. Um, but it's nice to have that option with Gabriel Jesus. And once again, he put in a nice performance. I like the connections that he has with Havertz. Havertz is just getting better and better every single week. And uh, yeah, I'm all for it. What it does uh, uh, give us the availability in the summer is that we don't have to worry about any sort of uh, movements on that side of the pitch. We only really need to worry about a striker and maybe someone that can rotate with Saka because we've seen a few times now where Martinelli's coming on the right-hand side um, in the second half and he hasn't really been as effective as he is normally. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, the side, it's nice to see Saka back um, and uh, Zinchenko starting again, Danny. Yeah, um, I think we need to have a system here because when you're talking, I was going through the messages. I'll leave All up right. the last message and then okay. you, then we both know where we are. You leave your one up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got to have a system. Stuff. You've got stalactites and you've got stalagmites. You need a system. Okay. Well, that's um, that was Harry that was Enfield. Like... Not Harry Enfield. Who was it? Um, the bloke who used to be a doctor, comedian, bald, big collars. Oh, uh, B Hill. That's Hillsong. it, Harry Hill. Harry Hill, there we go. Stalactites, stalagmites. I did not know he was a doctor, but there we go. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, um, yeah apart from the Zinchenko me? thing, I was just saying, uh, apart from the Zinchenko thing, mm -hmm. um, and the fact that Zinchenko started again, uh, overall, like apart from that, I'm not too I'm not too bothered. It was all, you know, standard stuff. But Zinchenko, Danny, Zinchenko yeah. starting another game of football in a row, that's uh, it's a bit worrying. Danny. Not Overly important games, not games that we were worried about who we were playing against. I, 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 I oh, there again, he's got massive Champions League experience, hasn't he? I was about to say maybe Trossard will be, um, will be back. No, not Trossard. Um, oh, Kivio will be back in for the Bayern Munich game, but maybe this is why he's getting it to play the games because that Champions League experience with Man City is one of only a handful of players in the side that have got that much experience. Um, he still, I mean, we saw at one point in the first half, he got done, he went in to go after one man. That man dummied him, gave it to his mate, and his mate ran off with the ball down the right hand side. And you're thinking, that's the kind of thing you'd fall for when you're a 17 year old fullback. No, he's got no pace, 
he doesn't seem to have any any brains when it comes to defending because he's a defensive midfielder for Ukraine. He's the captain. That's his job. His job isn't as a left back or a left wing back or an inverted full back or or left wing wing or wing midfield winger back or whatever combination of words you're going to use. I don't like him. I don't like the way he plays. And I think when Kivior plays at left back, you go, ah, it's going to be some defending tonight. Danny, tell me how you really feel. You're very on the fence with all of that. You've got to take the splinters out your arse. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <Yeah. laughs> so before we get into the game and covering everything, because we have a moment in the first 30 seconds, which is quite nice, I have to put a mention in. Stop fucking kneeling. I'm fucking done. What was that, what was that about? Keep, I come in from the kitchen with my food. And what were they praying for this time? out of football. The message of kneeling comes from a very toxic part of uh, of the world. I'd know quite, I'm a mixed race bloke. I've got no qualms of all of this shit. The more you talk about it, the more people are going to start addressing it as in a negative way. And you're allowed Don't? to say that and I'm not. It, well, exactly. My my granddad was from, from was one from the West Indies, so my mum's mixed race. She, and mixed race in Irish. So she grew up in this in the sixties and seventies as That's mixed tough. race in Irish. She had no chance. She had absolutely <laughs> no chance. And so <laughs> I'm I'm sick of it. Stop talking about it. Let's just move on. I grew up not seeing color. I don't get it. Judge people on their character, not their skin. I just think it's absolutely. Well, it hasn't right. worked, has it? No. Cause... All it's done is make me people more <laughs> devi uh, divisive. I'm uh, I'm so bored of it. Just move on. Stop bringing, stop bringing politics into football. I'm so bored of it. Stop using it as a way to virtue signal. I'm done. But anyway, I move on. I digress. Apologies. I just needed that little rant about that. And again, bunch. he's allowed to say it. I'm not. Exactly, exactly. So anyway, first minute, we got we get a free kick, quite convincing position in the first 30 seconds, Danny. And Erdegaard is on the ball. And uh, once, again, once again, Gabriel gets onto the end of it. The guy, is he, every time the ball is in the air from a sort of a dead ball situation, is it only Gabriel who's allowed to go on the end of it? Because it always seems to go to him, Danny. I've no idea, but it seems like it. Yeah, uh, are you it's on about, crazy. Yeah, are you yeah, on about uh, the um the uh, the Jesus or the defender? No, the Gabriel uh, Magla Halle. Oh, um, Gabriel Magla. Exactly, he had an effort in the first minute, and he just puts it wide. But it was a really lovely star, really yeah. showing what we wanted. However, oh god, yeah, I've, my first. Remember it? Note. Yeah, no, that's all right. Yeah, what, number however, two. Erdogan free kick and Gabriel yeah. with a lovely diving header should have scored. I wasn't sure what you're talking about because I weren't looking at my notes. Carry on. Well, absolutely fine. So uh, six minutes, nervy start. Nine minutes, Brighton looking good. Brighton definitely started the game a lot stronger uh, than than we did. 12 minutes in, Saka misses an early chance. He normally scores those where he does that Iron Robin thing, cuts in on the left and then, uh, and then tries to bend it in at the, at the far post, but is unable to get it on target this particular time. Uh, Ray Anderson, Deeks, where's your granddad from? He's from Guyana. He is Guyanese. He was from Georgetown. He was brought over here uh, with malicious, malicious intent, but man, made to, managed to make a life for himself and uh, worked really, really hard and married an Irish woman. So you can kind of guess how a West Indy Irish household uh, went in the, uh, in, the, in the 50s, 60s and 70s. I would imagine they were a very happy household and very welcoming with lots of food. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> crazy place. Absolutely well, crazy place. I had the of that. I had the yes. Irish part, not the rest right. of it. There we go, there we go. So, yeah, Um. anyway, uh, yeah, Saka has an e uh, early chance. And then and 13 minutes here, Saka and Jesus uh, produces a really huge save from the keeper. Danny, have you got any, uh, have you got any comments coming up? Uh, which one? Nope. What number? I've got minutes? 13 minutes here. I've got, 30, uh, I've got 12, another chance. And I think yeah. Jesus' shot was saved and then a mm -hmm. corner. Have yep. we covered this part? I'm not sure what part of the... No, this is this is coming up to the oh, okay. uh, to the penalty. It comes up in 31 minutes. I've Ignore. got it. Oh, was, that, yeah. was that the foul for the penalty? Yes, that's the ah, foul for the penalty. Ah, okie dokie. Um, so uh, 15 minutes, Havertz, great play into Jesus. Oh, yes. um, header just wide. I thought that the effort that Havertz put in, I thought Jesus should have complemented it back with a, an even better ev effort, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to come to fruition. 21 minutes, like a corner, Gabriel wide again from a dead ball situation. And then 26 minutes, pen heart attack moment, Danny, where Raya came in to, tr uh, uh, who is it? Who's the right back for Brighton? Trip, trip, what's his name? Um, the right back is Lamperty. Lamperty. Oh, what was I saying? Lamperty. Trimperty. Very good player. Lamperty. Yeah, very good player. Shame. Extremely quick. He's like a poor man's Bellerin before the yeah. injury. Yeah. Um, and uh, But yeah, I thought there was a moment there where it potentially could have been looked at as a penalty, Danny. Did you have any moments of, of, of stress and, yes. and 
Yes. Well, okay, cool. So Brighton are the yeah. home team, and you automatically assume that a home team are going to get the rubber the green. They're going to get the, the favourable decisions from the referee. Yep. But it turned out they didn't get the favourable decisions, and it they, they didn't get the penalty, which I think that started the unrest amongst the crowd. I mean, the crowd, obviously, that then... As Josh was saying last night during the preview show, his first season ticket is when, in 2000-2001, Brighton won Division 4, fourth tier of English football. It's taken 22 years, and now the last season they finished sixth in the Premier League. Um, oh, that's egg. That's disgusting. And uh, so they, it's a little bit like the Charlton Athletic effect. You were down the bottom, you're now up the top. How much are you legally allowed to grumble about finishing th sixth last season, having loads of players and being in the Premier League? And I think that, that some of the fans are starting to turn on De Zebri and on the owners for selling their best players, for the players not performing. And it's almost like they had one foot in the sandal for and being on the beach, beach for the season. And I think that not getting a penalty, that was just like another poke in the eye for the, for the home fans. And, and then the rest, the rest of the game went on. They they really had very little to cheer about. I think that that the game peaked for them at that possible penalty moment. I agree. I couldn't agree more. Um, Thirty-one minutes. Jesus trickery cuts in on the right penalty. Lovely ball over the top, and Saka makes it one nil. That was probably one of the most convincing penalties I've seen in a while. Uh, there's Jesus getting absolutely. Uh, well, the, the the challenge made from uh, from Lamperty. Uh, was he just tipped the underside of the ball. It wasn't, his enough, leg. it wasn't enough <laughs> contact to warrant it not being a penalty as yeah. it follows through and takes Jesus out completely. Uh, so it is a penalty. Very happy with that. Wasn't worried in any way. Um, yes, completely silly challenge. I think Ray's probably got an idea there and uh, Raya helped Arsenal get the penalty as he injured Lamptey. So that's quite funny. Uh, and Saka here, as I said, one of the most convincing penalties I've seen from him in a long time. Uh, rifles it into the bottom left-hand corner. Um, the side that he doesn't necessarily put it into the bottom. Uh, he puts it into the bottom right. But Saka does the business, makes it 1-0 one, uh, one after 31 minutes, Danny. Absolutely stunning. Great way to start the game. We needed a goal early on just to uh, show our intent for the game because it's so easy to end up in a, a situation where you're going to have... Because we had quite a few chances early on. And yeah. I thought, oh, are we on the are we on the struggle bus here? Is it going to be one of them days? Okay. And that as soon as you put that in, I thought I have no thoughts about not winning this game now. I thought it might be another Luton game where we just get one nil, maybe two nil. But come the second half, we really did show some stuff. So uh, um, that was the the penalty with him, and then he scored it. And then just after that, Gabriel got hurt, didn't he? Thirty seventh minute, and we thought, oh. Images of last season. No, of I wasn't. I wasn't worried. No. I didn't even make a note of it. I wasn't that. I wasn't worried at all. Um, you know, the guy plays a lot of football. We put in another absolutely stellar performance today. Um, but from the moment the penalty went in, Arsenal went on the attack. I love it when we score ourselves a goal because the game becomes more open and Arsenal become even more dominant, which is a fantastic trait for a football club to have. Um, yeah. A lot of clubs, and especially Arsenal back in the day. You'd score a goal and then they'd start to rest on their laurels a little bit and sit yeah. off. We saw that for years. But the moment we now score in the last, this season and last season, we know that when we score, the chances are we're going to score again. And as I said, a few chances went our way. Uh, but 44 minutes, Danny, huge, massive save from Raya to finger, pink, uh, finger it past the post. He gave it a little cheeky finger past the post. Great save from Raya. That's the sort of performance you would have seen from Ramsdale. But Raya proving and showing that he's got that sort of ability in his locker, Danny. It was nice Patrick to see. Carl, Patrick is here. We just went through the prediction. Patrick, you were 100% correct, but there again, four of you were correct. Yeah, it's just showing that yet again, I mean, there's that there's that uh, tweet going around, isn't it? It's the uh, the Havertz apology form. You meant to fill it in. And, and and they've been doing this for a couple of months now. I think there should be a Raya apology apology form. And I'd I have to fill that agree. one in. The Havertz one, I said, I believe in Arteta. It's, it, he knows All day, every doing. day. But the All Raya day. one, I mean, we were fully on board. We, we, we'd we signed up for a season ticket of the Raya's not good. Get Ramsdale in. He's I, was, I, was, I was on the Raya train the moment we had rumours to sign him. <laughs> Two weeks after Ramsdale's really stupid interview that he did, which basically sealed his coffin. The moment we were rumoured to, I went, number one. That's it. And I've knelt back down since. I've got all the tweets to prove it. I've never once said that we need Ramsdale. Uh, and uh, the tweets are there, as I said, to prove it. 
Um, yeah, so, uh, two minutes. He's, sh- he's, save, he's saving us. He's he's yeah. he's amazing. If we win the title this season, Ray would have to take a large slice of that that cake. Can, well said, well said, Danny. Forty-two, uh, forty-five, and two minutes. Uh, nice pressure from Havertz. Really unlucky to not get on the end of that one. Uh, and we're finishing the strong, the set, uh, the the half strong. Great play out from the back on forty-five and five, and then lovely play from Saka on forty-five and six. But that yeah. finishes the second half. We ended that the Brighton started the half stronger. We finished it better, and it puts into the perspective that I'm hoping that we continue that that sort of pressure that we've applied and the determination uh, that we show towards the end of the first half that we can hopefully introduce that into the second half, Danny. But what a great, great performance, mm, Danny. It is. Um, half time. can I say hello? We've got seven interactions on Facebook. We've got yes. Oku Galena, Dan Vanniman. That's my mate, an American living in Germany. He used to come to the football with me back in the early noughties. He's nice. a... He's an Eintracht Frankfurt fan living in Germany. But yeah, it's uh, I converted him to footballism. I think I did. Hopefully he's watching. Uh, Love, w- Love Wanga, Chris Hoppy Hopkins and Mulavi is watching. And also that's me. And the other one is uh, a Burkhart Wonderland, but a sad face. That's because I didn't want all the faces being being the same. So, so there you go. But half time, I, I'd finished my boiled eggs and meat. I'd uh, finished my can of Monster and I'd moved on to a can of Pepsi, getting all my protein and liquids in early. So I was I was happy on both fronts, Bad. the footballing front and then the food front. And someone tweeted at half time: Saka's goal dash assists with Arsenal. His first season, 16. Second season, 14. Third season, 19. Last season, 26. This season already, 30. And he's barely out of nappies. Unbelievable. Is it really, wait, is it really 30? 30 goal and assist contributions this season. No, really? Yeah, yeah I'll go and have a look at the old... I need um, to see that. I need to visually the, see that on my for my eyeball, my seeing balls. On the transfer face. market page, it says Saka has got 16 goals, 13 assists. Hold on, it says 30. What's going on? Maybe it hasn't updated for today. Yeah, that okay, would probably be it. That is... That is uh, Odegaard's got 17. Uh, Trossard is on 13. Havertz is on 13. Uh, Martinelli and Jesus are also on 13. Eddie's on nine. And Declan Rice for a defensive midfielder is on 13. It's the lucky number, it seems, for most of our players. Clearly, clearly. We, it's lovely to see all of these players giving these performances uh, when everybody's constantly giving us jip about how we need a striker, which we do. But the media, the mainstream media, all the pundits, all the football professionals, yeah. um, they all they like ran and raved about it like we can't score goals. And that's something yeah. that we can do that yeah. in quite a large amount. So it was lovely to see. Uh, Rocky, couldn't agree more with you, sir. Second half, Danny. Yes. Second half, 48 minutes. Jesus unlucky. Back post. There was a lot of times where Jesus... Uh, rose above the rest to get his head on the end of the ball, but was unable to mm. get them on target really any time. Um, he is learning a new kind of, not learning a new kind of position, but playing in a particular position for Arsenal that he's not done so far in his very short Arsenal career. Yeah. But it is nice to see him out there on the left. It gives the availability of Havertz to play up top because I can't, Danny, I can't see Havertz not starting for Arsenal up top for the remainder of the season. I can't see anybody that's going to challenge him in this. I can't, can't. see Arteta changing. He's so him. versatile I and good in the happening. air. Yeah. We haven't had someone as good in the air as that or dominant in the air since we had uh, the French lamppost up front. But, I mean, Jesus has played, um, someone said uh, in the early one in the chat that he has played wide before when he was at City, when yep. he was playing with Aguero. Obviously, he was playing wide at that time. And then when Aguero wasn't playing, he was playing up front. So yep. he is he is he uh, um, has done it previously but he hasn't really done it for us his role has mainly been as a striker because we haven't got anybody else when eddie isn't playing and yeah. so now i think he's he's yeah, having to readapt to that outside role but i think he's only 27 or something like that shouldn't be too hard for him no but, not a hard not hard at all but i don't think he's going to give us what martinelli gives us on that left wing no i, I agree with you entirely 50 minutes zinni just isn't it and that's all i have to say on the matter yeah uh 52 minutes. We won't discuss that, White. That's what I've written there. There was a moment where he had a bit of an altercation with the Brighton player. He raised oh. his hands. I think it was Esp- uh, Esp- What's his name? Espinosa? No, not Espinosa. Uh, Estupinian. 
Oh, the left back. Yeah, the left back. Um, I think he had a bit of a uh, sort of little scuffle with him. And so I, yeah, Ben White basically held his throat as if he's been bottled. And it wasn't, it just looked like a, it just, I'm not, I'm not for it. I'm not for it. Don't do that shit. Havertz, don't dive. Ben White, don't do that garbage where you pretend like you've been shot in the throat. I'm not, I'm just not interested in that sort of Did bullshit. Did you see the Van Dyke one um, from the other night where he grabbed no. the other player around the throat? Paul really? shoved him to the floor and still had his hands around his throat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And he, and, he, and he didn't get anything, did he? Of course he didn't get anything with it. Oh, I want to go and find this. it because it's I one need of them. To, I need to see that. That's absolutely freaking ridiculous. Mm. Um, I'm find it while you 54 talk. minutes. Nice weak foot. Uh, weak foot. Weak foot shot from Erdegaard showing he's got that right foot capability. 55 minutes. Nicely worked corner. Very unlucky. I like seeing... Danny, when Arsenal yeah. have a, a free kick or a corner and they do all these little mannerism things where they're like, oh, I'm going to move the ball slightly forward or I'm going to pick it up and spin it backwards or I'm going to cough or I'm going to put my arm up twice. You try and start to try and notice all of these little things where you're like, training ground corners coming up. I can see it. And 55 huh. minutes here, we see a really nicely worked corner, but we were very unlucky to not do anything with it. And then 62 minutes, have it. Jorginho, incredible play. Um, nice little interlinking bit of football with with Jorginho and Erdegaard. Jorginho gets in behind, plays the ball from the byline, and Havertz is there to clean it up. It was a lovely, clean, uh, trademark finish like Olivier Giroud would be completely proud of, who's apparently moving to L.A. Uh, it has got some really nice pictures of this. So um, oh, that's the build-up to the play where Erdegaard goes to put um, Havertz. No, gives it's about to give it to bottom right-hand corner, Jorginho, like you said. Yeah. He low, he puts it low in towards Havertz. Havertz just look at that. It's like the Somme there. Players dropping everywhere, manages to get it in. Better angle here. All the players laying all over the floor. Is it there's four Brighton players on the floor down there? Jorginho, for the people at home, is looking like he's about to do some kind of ninja move on Havertz. They're screaming at each other. Havertz runs off. Uh, Jorginho is fist pumping towards the fans. Havertz does the obligatory knee slide. And then uh, Jorginho catches up with him. Oh, no, that's, that's, no that is Jorginho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this is a really good picture. The yeah. chaos. Someone's thrown a flare on the pitch, a pink one. Then the, the uh, Brighton players are broken. All of our players are celebrating. Another really good one, Declan Rice, the uh, player of the year for most yeah. people. Yeah. And all those wonderful pictures. Thanks to whoever took them. It's nothing to do with me. Do you want to see the thing of um, Thingy Bob's strangling someone? Yes, before you quickly say that, I just yeah. want to say, Chelsea, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank oh, you yes. for those two players. We yes. really appreciate it. I'm sure if you had the likes of Havertz and Jorginho in your team right now, yeah. you'd be doing a damn sight better than you are. So good luck in the, in your mid-table battles and all of that. I really hope you don't get any European football of any kind and there's a massive fire sale in the summer. But I digress. Danny, let's have a look at this VVD. Have we got a... Can we, can we have a little butch. Oh, we can. We can have a little screen share. Let's see that. That's okay. the yeah. uh, it's seventieth minute. Liverpool one one with Sheffield United. Uh huh. Uh-huh. That's trusty, gets isn't him. it? I don't know. He's getting him, and he's still got his hands on him as he's shoving him to the floor. <laughs> you... Absolutely nothing done about it. And look, he's dead. He's actually killed him. <laughs> You've got your hands, both I... hands, round a what? player's neck. He's the Undertaker. He's sh- or came from wrestling. <laughs> Absolutely. An unbelievable piss take, as usual, from the FA, and they won't do anything about it. Because it doesn't it's, shock it's me. Horrible. It doesn't shock me. I was talking to a friend yesterday or today. He's not really big into football. He's a rugby lad himself, but he he, he follows the Arsenal as his team. And Good. he was saying, um, you know, I was saying, oh, you know, you got to come up for a barbecue on the 19th of May, which is the final day of the season which we can confirm that Arsenal won the league and we'll have a little cheeky barbecue and a couple of bevies. Yeah. Um, he then said, and bear in mind, he doesn't know anything about football. He said, but isn't Liverpool going to win it because of how Klopp's leaving and it's his last season? And I was like, yes, mainstream media want that more than anything. And that you can see the the uh, the allowances that seem to be keep going their way this season, that's for sure. You know, we used to call it Fergie time. Now we call it Klopp time because it's absolutely ridiculous so far this season. And this is another instance of that coming into fruition and the fact that the FA are like, oh, Klopp, we've got to make it all about this and the fact that it's his final season and the big crescendo and Jesus Christ, what an absolute 
pile of shit, Danny. Absolute what, pile of what shit. What size put? Jacker would have been banned for life. I completely agree. <laughs> the guy would have been the guy would have been absolutely rugby tackled by officials and thrown off the pitch. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, Absolute sixty-four mistake. minutes. Subs, subs, Danny. We got Saka uh, and Jesus coming off for Martinelli and Trossard. Once yeah. again, Danny, we see Martinelli playing out on the right. Is that the future of Gabriel Martinelli? Um, I think when you've got all the players fit, it, it you're going to have to. I mean, I think most any any winger can play on either side unless they're called uh, Reese Nelson, then they can't play on either side. But uh, I think he, he's he's adaptable. And as we all know, my 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 what I want is to see Martinelli playing out front when he's got that pace. It reminds me of a of a young uh, Lenny Henry. No, Thierry Henry. When I say young Lenny Henry, unless you've listened to the Tuesday Club, no one will know any what I'm on about in the slightest. Good. One good. Of, one of, a Muppet. Good. One of he is, but one of them once said that. I think it was uh, Alan Davis once said it, and then they all say it every time. Uh, the only thing I remember that was decent about him is that he was married to Dawn French because I loved French and Saunders growing up when I was a little kid. Mm, yeah, and so uh, that's the only thing that I've got point. good to say about Lenny Henry. Um, have we got some stuff in nice the... Nice range uh, of hotels. Ish, really? You like bed bugs? Oh. Yes. No. 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 <laughs> uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to destroy. Um, how would you pronounce that first name, Danny? Apurv Pandey. Okay. Good win. Trossard celebration was iconic at the end. Serves him right for getting booed. Yeah. Um, I, as I said, thanks, Brighton, for letting us sign Ben White and uh, Leano Trossard. It was very... It, it was... Sorry? <laughs> Enough. Thanks. We thank Chelsea. Yeah, we're, we're just thanking everyone. Thanks, we'll guys. Thanking West really, Ham later in the show as well. We really appreciate. Yeah, well, and we should, that, very true. Very true. Um, but yeah, no, uh, it was uh, it was funny to see the celebration from Trossard. It was really, literally, just a big fuck all, fuck you lot to to Brighton. Yeah. So that was quite funny to see. The booze were so loud though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here you go. Ridiculous. Got a quote from Rudy. There we go. So, Rudy, Kai Havertz, when he was asked if the Arsenal boys discussed Man City beating Palace today before the Brighton game, we did not speak about it. We live in an Arsenal world, not a, a Man City world. We're just focusing on us, which is really good to see. Rocky, I'm 56. Because we're the same age. I'm 53. 54. Next. That's how numbers work. Deke doesn't yes. know numbers. Um, and then we've got, so here we go. So, 71 minutes, Trossard effort saved. Once again, we see Trossard be introduced and he instantly makes an impact. Yes. Um, I've, I'm, I'm a massive fan of Trossard coming off the bench. It's yeah. it's like that he was born well, he to do it. Luton, didn't he? he didn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. If, when he starts, Double. he really doesn't have a great game. Mm. But when he comes off the bench, he's Because he's dominant. tricky and quick. Yeah, and he, and he really causes a lot of chaos. Um, 72 minutes, Zinni off for Tommy Asu. Danny, yeah. stopped another substitution. Welcome and warranted. Welcome and warranted. Yeah. Um, I would have given Tommy Ashu more time, but there again, they both need um, playing time because they've both been injured for yep. quite a while, as has Jesus. All these players have come back. We've got one injury at the club at the moment. One. How, that, how is that even possible? He's All back, of our players... He, he was in full training um, yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Um, um, before, the loot, before the Luton game, Arteta said in a press conference that he won't be playing in the next four games. Well, two of those are out of the way. And then two to go. And imagine, never in the history of human race have Arsenal had every player, even when we only had 12 players, 11 starters and one sub. And that's all all the club ever had was 12 players. Even them days, we never added 12 fit because players in them days would play with, with broken necks and missing legs. Yep, yep, yep. Pretty much, pretty much. Um, 86 minutes. Beautiful stuff. Trossard. Oh, Kai yes. Havertz. Who? Never heard of Kai him. Kai Havertz. The uh, the flop of the the flop signing of the season a uh, couple of months in and I was like fuck all of you lot he's amazing I love him he's going to become amazing and uh, he gets himself an beautiful assist Trossard who has to do a lot of work himself pretty much running from the halfway line controls the ball beautifully and then dinks it over the keeper incredible yeah. performance from him once again best finisher at the club Danny there's no one else there's no one else I would rather the ball drop to. If it was like a, you know, you've got one player to hit it outside the box from like a deflection or something like that. Trossard's the guy I want to go and take that chance on for 100%. Danny, you agree? Yeah, I've got some, 
got some pictures here. I haven't got any running up to the goal because they went too quick. There's him doing this. Oh, no, no binoculars. Celebration I love that. So far. That's, that, that, do you know what? Oh, that's a brilliant point, Danny. No yeah. binoculars because he really wants to soak in yeah. the sour, bitter taste he, that the Brighton fans are leaving. He needs all that peripheral vision. Nice point here from Jacqueline. Even though we need to thank Chelsea for the second goal, Chelsea need to thank us. Our third goal moved them up from 10th to 9th this evening, helping the needy excellently put Jacqueline. Oh, Wonderful. That, that comment wins That's the... almost comment of the night. That's comment of the night. Yeah, we're going to have to come up with that, Danny. We're going to have to come up with that. That's comment of the night. Well, congratulations. You've won the first ever comment of the night. Um, so yeah, 86 minutes. We just look incredible. And I instantly write the moment that happens, Havertz man of the match. So it takes me up to 86 minutes to make my decision on man of the match. Um, mm. who do you think who your who was your man of the match, Danny? Well, according to who scored.com dot com or dot com, I don't know. Uh Havertz got an eight point eight. The next yep. one down for us was Rice with a seven point seven and Saka wow. with a seven point seven. Okay. Uh, I would say our defenders and goalkeeper, I mean, Raya was brilliant. He stopped yep. it being 3-1, possibly 3-2. Yep. Uh, that's his job, though. Um, Jorginho, I thought, was really good. Erdegaard yep. was quiet. Rice was a little bit quiet. Martinelli didn't have much chance to do stuff. Yeah, and I didn't even notice Nketiah and Vieira came on. I was busy getting ready for the show. Don't well, worry, you're not missing out on anything. Happy um, uh, Fabio Vieira Day, everybody. <laughs> it's nice to see you, to see you nice. Yeah, I'm he's he's still alive. Yeah. I'm going to give it to Havertz. I mean, you can't not give it to the boy bloke. He's He's been Arsenal Havertz now for about six months, five months, six months, something like that. Because yep. uh, the first couple of months, he was still in transition. A goal, an assist, bossing the midfield. And and when you've got... I'm going to go back and look at these these pictures again because they're at... Look at that. That the, the, He's almost cracking a smile there. And for a German to almost smile, you know... You know, oh, there he is. He's smiling. Hey! He's back on. <laughs> There's a, there was an image. There was an image of uh, yesterday of exactly. Per Mertesacker <laughs> standing next to Kai Havertz, and yeah. everyone on Twitter was like, "He is actually quite tall." <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, he is. He's six, uh, six four, six, isn't he? Six four. Uh, no, no, Havertz is six four. He's yeah. Per's. Uh, it's Per six six. Six six. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it puts into perspective actually how tall he really is. I don't think a lot of people see how tall. He is and understand it because obviously television is quite difficult to kind of guess the, the size of people and stuff like that. So, yeah. but it was a w what a performance from the guy! Incredible, one hundred percent man of the match. I can't think yeah. of anybody else that deserved it in to that level, that degree. Um, and I've got a few more. I've got a few more comments, Danny. Have you got anything before that that's um, worth note? Notice. Rocky here has uh, said, uh, do you get 89 vials? I talk about that. I've put that as one of our questions, Rocky. So uh, don't go away. We'll answer that in a little bit. Any more notes? Uh, another attack down the left. Declan with a cheeky shot goes just wide in the 87th minute. And then, uh, then we were done. So, yeah, uh, job done. More than I expected. More than I hoped for. And so I was very, very happy with... I don't think... If the only niggle you can have about that game was uh, the um, Zinchenko's defensive... Yep. Um, what's it called when you don't do your job properly? Doesn't track back. He's not. Yeah. Tra he doesn't track back. He's, he gets he's caught defen defensively out of position. Unaware. He gets caught out of position a lot of the time. His football awareness, defensive capabilities is, is, is shown wanting a lot of the time. If that was a world-class... I'll tell you, not even really world class, but Premier League class winger that was competing against him, then I think we would have a lot more problems. Um, luckily, uh, the Brighton who players in his opposite corner didn't have the best of nights. He didn't perform. Um, there was a few moments where he was, you know, he showed what he can do. But I thought Zinchenko was was uh, was very very lucky to have not had a moment where a lot of Arsenal fa players and fans, even for that matter, are going to be getting on his back. Uh, that's for sure. I've got a few more, a few more comments before the end of the game. Um, yeah. 88 minutes, Rice running a million miles, but keeper saves it corner. It's always yeah. nice to see after 88 minutes, Rice is able to just run like he's the Duracell bunny. Um, that was the last note I made. Then I 18, started preparing. And then 89 minutes, um, Eddie and Vieira for Havertz and Erdegaard substitutions. 90 minutes, uh, another corner where Gabriel um, would have scored. Um, but, uh, but unfortunately, uh, I think, I think Havertz was in the way. 
Uh, and then 90, and then 91 minutes, Gabriel low block. We've got ourselves a low block, Danny. We've got ourselves a low is. block. And uh, mm. no, he got his he got his knee down and, and and saved it from a from a low defensive block. And Gabriel celebrated, as did a lot of the Arsenal players celebrated, like they just scored a goal. And it was nice Rightly to see. Done. It's a, it's nice to see the players after 90 minutes. Uh, you know, the game's pretty much won, but they, they, the clean sheet it means something, Danny. It means something, especially with the performances that we've got, uh, you know, the games that we've got coming up, how tight it is at the top of the table, uh, barring a few points here or there, the goal difference, Danny, could become very important and come into play in the last few games of the season. And if we've got an incredible goal difference in which we do, then it puts, uh, you know, mm. it, it puts a lot of less worry on us when it comes down to potential goal difference decisions being made. Because uh, goal difference will make the difference of one point. And that's what we need to look out for because uh, things are getting tight at the top. And whoever has got the best goal difference is the one that is going to have, uh, have a, the, the, hand, um, the upper hand if the season is going to go to joint on points. Because if, the, if everybody wins their games for the rest of the season, it'll be Man City 71, Arsenal 72, Liverpool 74. Now, all Liverpool have to do is draw one game and then it'll be 71, 72, 72. Then it's going to come down to goal difference. And if I bring up um, the league table at the moment, there we go. Uh, goal difference, Arsenal 51, Liverpool 42, Man City 40. So that is worth ha half a point. You don't get the half a point if people are new to football, but you would get the advantage. What, a tenth of a point, a millionth of a point, doesn't matter what fraction you give it. We would win because the first thing it comes down to in Premier League football is points. Next, it comes down to goal difference. And if both teams have the same goal difference, then I think it goes down to head to head. And if both games were 1 1, then it will go down to, I think, red cards, then yellow cards. And there's an entire um, system of if it's a draw, it's a draw, it's a draw. And then at the end, it just comes down to a fist fight between the managers, MMA style with Joe Rogan commentating, which is what uh, I would love to see because I think Arteta would uh, would do both um, Pep and he would do Klopp. I mean, Klopp is bitey, we know that, but in MMA there's no fish hooking, no gouging and no biting, so Klopp's uh, uh, abilities to fight dirty MMA like in UFC 1 are out the window. So if it comes down to it, everything's a draw at the end of the season, more on the same points, goals, everything, then it will be an MMA styles fight between all three of them. I'm looking forward, to, I'm that, looking forward to that, Danny. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good promotion sales pitch. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm all for it. Let's get involved. I'm Lovely. there. Wherever it is being held, I'm flying out. I'm, I'm totally there. there 100. Um, yep. Hopefully, it will be held in in Norwich. Then, uh, oh, that yeah, Ellis, nice. Ellis oh. Nick, and uh, Phil can get there. That's nice. It's not too far. I can I can make the trip. That's yeah. not bad at all. Uh, Rocky says, not being rude, but what's the name of the co-host? Deacon. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> nice to meet you. I do all the post game stuff. Uh, like 99.9% .9 of them, anyway. Um, so uh, I'm always around. Hello, nice to meet you. Hello, hello, hello. Phil Macker said uh, Danny's the co-host. Rocky, technically correct uh, yeah. for the uh, for the co-host uh, for the um, much of a muchness, really. Yeah, I just I just talk a lot. So Danny just goes, I oh, just let people talk. Well, it means I I can concentrate on pressing the buttons. Oh, I'm exactly. Gonna... But that's but that's it, Danny. Three 0 victory. Yeah, over I'm going to bring up Brighton. something that you were just talking about. Um, end of the season. Uh, there we go. There's my uh, Google spreadsheet on uh, how we're doing this. Season. You can see last season, this is Premier League games only. It was game 30 where we fell apart. And in the last three, six, in the last nine games of the season, we won three. And so far, two games into the, I mean, you can see in previous seasons, we get to around game 29, game 30, around that era, one way, either way, regularly starts to fall apart. And then we only start getting good again when someone else has won the title, like four years ago uh, when uh, we were doing doing really well. And then last five games of the season, we won. Happened all the time. That season, 16, 17, won the last five. 13, 14, won the last five. Uh, and last season, we won three out of the last five. But now, all we have to do, eight more games to go deep, a couple of tough games, but I'm confident that there will be no L's in the rest of those eight games. I don't want to see any L's. No L's. No L's of any kind, Danny. But what a performance from the Arsenal. And once again, a performance that was uh, was proven on the road. Danny, are we are we just 
we're just really getting into things now, aren't we? We're really starting to see, and even we're Arteta really said, confident. "This well, you know, <laughs> um, uh, you know, the, uh, Arteta was asked again in a po- in a in a pregame interview about the um, stage. Is he still at stage three, or is he about to progress into stage four? And he says that he still very believes that we're in stage three. So we are still, we've still got, we've still got so much more to go on the roadmap and progression to be made." <laughs> That yep. I am absolutely buzzing. We are we're looking fantastic. We're playing great football. The team has got no major issues. There's no injuries. There's no personality or personnel problems. It's all everyone's yes, singing from the same hymn sheet. Really that's important. very important. No it's personnel all, problems. No troublemakers at the club. There's no there's no moments where a, the captain of the football club is turning up late for training or even late for a sp- a type of Spurs game or yeah. whatever like that because he's stuck in his Lamborghini. Yeah, um, there's no, is. there's no moments like this anymore. We're not running into this. It's become, this has become completely ridiculous. And I'm, 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 I'm fully on board with the, with the model that, uh, that Arteta has, has shown us. And I can't wait to see the end, uh, end result. We're in, we're in part three of a part five, Danny. I'm all for we it. certainly are. Um, Apov, uh, I'm deep to men talk about your point there, but Apov, where are you? What what city and what country are you in? Because I'm looking for when we do the preview shows, the recent additions to the preview shows. I have got Hantumi in San Francisco, formerly Nosa in the UK, Patrick Carlson in Arebo, Sweden, and Paul Nell Not Neil in the USA. I like to say what time the football is on in different countries. So if anybody here is in a, a country other than the UK and the USA. Let me know what city and let me know what country and I'll add you to my list. And when I will go and I'll do five or six the uh, other kickoff times. So let me know. So uh, Apov, you sound like you may well be outside of Norwich, which is interesting. But Dick, what do you think to his comment? Are we on board with this? I'm. Uh, there's nothing else apart from a Man United. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing else but a Man United win tomorrow. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, as much as it's going to make us all really unwell, yes, it's 100% a United win tomorrow. That's what we're all going to want. Uh, you, you, I, of the geeks from Muckleby for Muckle, but look at that. That's a happy family. That's very nice. It's good to see uh, a happy family like that. The it internet is. is filled with so much negativity. So it's nice to see some hello, positivity. The Mucklebees. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, Rancid Pumpkin, why is a troublemaker? He doesn't want to play for England. Correction, he doesn't want to play for Southgate. Yep. The dinosaur FA puppet who yep. I can't wait yep. to become the new Manchester United manager. Oh, so glory, they can guys. all they can all uh, all the boardroom members can do this at United and, and pull all the strings and, and Southgate Southgate be like, Yes, hello, I'm the new Manchester United manager and I make all the decisions. Yes, of course you do, Gareth. Of course you do. Um, so yeah, I can't wait for him to get his grubby little hands away from England and go and destroy another football club. So I'm all for it. I'm all for it. So but yeah, Ben Benny Blanco doesn't want to play for Southgate. And not England. Steve Holland. No, it's, no, it's not Steve Holland, is it? Or is it? The is assistant it, manager. That's yeah, the one he had a disagreement with. Yes, yes, it is. Ah. It. it is. Oh, yeah. I thought ah. it was in Mumbai. Mumbai. That is, that is weird because the last last time I did a show, I said it's midnight in Mumbai, India. And I didn't know anybody in Mumbai. So there you go. I will oh, add well. you. Thank you the, for joining us from yeah. Mumbai. It must be stupid o'clock in the morning. So fair play. Uh, and I'll add that to uh, the list of people. I always like to have new countries. If anyone is out there in a the country, do let me know. I've got lots for the UK and USA. Go on, in. No worries. If you have any questions, ladies and gentlemen, in regards to the game or Arsenal in general, post it into the chat now, and we will be answering all questions. Um, do you want to do questions, Danny? Should we do some questions? Let's get yeah, questions. we can do some questions. Do some questions, yeah. shall we? Phil Macker, question. Why is it... <gasps> Go on, you press your button. I've I've clicked the wrong button. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Let me me click again. I'm just going to add rancid. Yeah, go for it. Phil Macker, why is it when one of our players leaves the pitch injured or subbed, the job's worth ref wants a little word, just do one? Yeah, well, it's. I think it comes down to a lot of moments where the FA and the, the referee board and all of that breathe down the necks of the referees about these little things. You know they're they're trying to they're trying to make football completely alien to the football that we once watched. Danny, mm. ball boys are not allowed yes. to give the ball to football players anymore. Uh, we what did is, it. Did it in the Emirates is, the other night. We're still doing it. What is going on? What is that? It's what is, <laughs> it's what it is. Listen, I I've seen I've seen the two instances that are the most famous ones: the Liverpool 
corner with Trent Alexander-Arnold and the Spurs Mourinho uh, counter-attack. I've seen these moments and I despise both of these football clubs immensely. However, I'm fine with it. Ball boys, that's the, it's, it's a passion of their, it's obviously what they want to do. They're obsessed with the game. They want to be in close proximity and be around their heroes and be able to feel like they're part of something. They're just glorified. Um, what would you call it? You know, the ball boy is at tennis now. Yeah. Kind of like that now. It's kind of like that. But they even make the FA trying to, trying to sterilize <laughs> everything about football so they can control the, 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 the minutiae in football to make sure their agenda of certain teams getting certain things, getting advantages is out the window. They don't want it and we're not going to go along with it. So um, it's all very, very boring. People are talking about Cedric going to play for Man United when uh, when um, Southgate goes there. Uh, the geeks of Muckleby and uh, and Apurv is saying it. Cedric Van Wambisaka, Maguire, and Evans in United Defence. Chef's kiss. <laughs> what? I think they're just joking. It's no, just hilarious. I, to, I, I, I'm. Whoa! <laughs> you just told me Santa doesn't exist. Crazy stuff. Don't want to hear which, it. Which, which he does exist. Exactly. He does exist. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Ball boy. Being a ball boy is tradition. I completely yeah. agree. Once yeah, again, it's them. just making things weird. You're just and making things weird. What's the fine going to be if the ball boys do do it? Because I'd say ball boys. Well, we're going to ball boys and girls. Is it race sexist? Uh, we're going to have both of them. And I'd ball say people. Uh, ball people. People of ball. Whichever way around you want of people with balls and without balls. Uh, we're going to do it, and we're going to make a comment and go FA uh, five grand fine if they do it. Fair enough. We're going to carry on doing it. Yeah, I, uh, do you know what? Do you know what? I, if they did introduce that, it would be very interesting to, see, interesting to see which football clubs just go, carry on doing it, we'll pay the fines. Fuck them. Yeah, I would, in fact, get the Globem, Glo- Globem, the Globem, ha- ha- the Harlem Globetrotters in. There we go. Better late than ever. I'd get those in to teach the ball boys and girls skills and tricks and techers. I like it. Just to I wind like the it. FA up even more. I like it. I like How's it. that? Question, Phil Macker on Twitter this time uh, is Havertz reversal. Oh, he's reversal. triple dipping because he's been a bad boy. I like it, I like it. I like a bit of triple dip. Yeah, Havertz rev- uh, reversal of popularity bigger than Jacka re- uh, reversal. No. Um, I thought Havertz got obviously a lot of people on his back, but I think it was like a divided opinion. I think when Jacka did the telling everyone to fuck off at the Emirates, was it at the Emirates or is it away from home? I think it was at the Emirates. because Yeah, well, left. when he told us all to fuck off, I think everyone was pretty much on the same page when it came to the dislike of Xhaka and what he produced last season and became my player of the season. Bear in mind, guys, he played, became my player of the season last season. His reversal of popularity was just immense. I don't think anything's, I don't think anything's going to touch anything like that in a long time. I think the only one that can maybe compete with it, if, if a Bamiyang managed to come back and have a, an incredible season, you know, if, you know, if that sort of, that sort of feeling, do you know what I mean? Really mess up that bad. And then, and then come back and, and, and become one of the most dominant strikers in the Premier League and, and give us a chance to nearly win the title. I think that, that that's the only chance in recent history that could have really compared with what Xhaka did to reverse his negative popularity. But there we go. Peter has just asked, what's Southgate's wages, the England manager? Five no. million pound, four million pound a year, a hundred grand a week. un believable. I just Googled it and checked four different places. What's... Danny, yeah. if you can find out whilst I'm answering this question how much Arteta is being paid, I'd be very intrigued. Mm, very intrigued. Look. And maybe Pep as well. Um, if But that Arteta more than most. Um, Rocky, question. Danny, do you... Oh, wait, we'll come back to that one. We'll come back to that one whilst Danny's doing something. Peter Coulson, last season, I think it was Saliba's injury that cost us the title. I think everybody thought that one. One million percent. Who is the one player we cannot afford to lose this season? I saw some someone in the chat when this question was brought up that Declan Rice was one of the people that was mentioned. But call me cliche, call me cliche, but Saliba again, I think for me, is the player that we could not afford to lose. I love Declan Rice and I really want him obviously to stay fit, but I thought that party and what he showed us against... You know, bear in mind is Luton, but he he performed. He started to show those moments again where where you know Party was really part of the team and he's really doing the business. And I thought he he showed a, he showed himself a lot of uh, respect for himself to be honest and, and put in a really decent performance. So for me, I think Saliba again would be the one that would really 
put us into jeopardy. I know Ben White can play there, but the the connection that Gabriel and Saliba is even more f- uh, potent now than it was last season. But Danny, have you got have you got some numbers? I'm just for me? about to cut and paste it and put it on the screen. I'll have it done no, by the time nice. we finish the next question. All right, now I will do another question then. Clock end on Twitter. Thank you. Would you consider Tommy at left back on Tuesday? No, I would consider Kivior at left back on yep. Tuesday. I think that the fact that Tommy Asu is being introduced into the side, I think, shows the hand as well from Arteta. He's not going to be bringing on Kivior. The guy's match fit's not a problem. Um, saying that though, actually, he's not he's not he's not started two games in a row now. So, but hopefully he's match fit. Obviously, he's going to be training all the time like that. So, but I'm I'm thinking he's going to be coming straight back into the side on Tuesday for the Bayern game to begin with. Right, we've got some wages. Pep Guardiola on £20 million a year for City. £20 million. So what was Gareth? He was on four, right? You said. Yeah. So he's earning the same amount of money as Eddie Howe at Newcastle, bearing in mind Newcastle's not having a great season this season. However, they were decent last season. Unai Emery, who's overperforming with Aston Villa at the moment, um, on four million. We've got Marco Silva from Fulham. Um, who else? So De Zebri from Brighton, who is, uh, l- you know, looking to be the next big manager. Um, only on one point five million, Danny. But four million for Gareth Southgate. I th- mm. and Arteta's on nine point five. Okay. Okay. That's that's not bad for someone who's forty two. Wow. No, I know, right? Yeah. I know. I do like to see the young managers, though, because they've got that passion and then the connection with the younger fans. When you've got someone like a dinosaur like Gareth Southgate, all he does is alienate people. Not so a fan. It said Southgate was on four million a year, which is a hundred grand a week. So does that mean that Arteta is on about two hundred and twenty grand a week? And does that mean that that Pep is on half a million pound a week? If you do you know what's do you know what's funny, Danny? I, I've always I've always thought about this when it comes to wages. You know when you are working a job and the person okay. who is above you is younger, and no, you have not that... worked since ninety three. Fair enough, then. So, guys, when you go and <laughs> work a else. job, when you go and work a job, and the person your superior is younger than you, it creates a really weird balance of tension between the two of you because it's like a I'm talking to I'm talking down to my elder, but I'm talking up to my younger. It's all it's very weird. It causes a very weird moment between the two of you. I always thought when a manager is having a discussion with a player and wants them to respect them, but they're earning less than them, I always thought that would create a weird sort of vacuum. So I'm kind of weirdly Danny, maybe I'm speaking absolute bullshit here. I'm yeah. kind of weirdly on the ball with the idea of the manager being paid the sort of same money as the most expensive player at the club, especially when they're the, the manager that they're performing to the standards that they are with Pep Guardiola doing what he's doing. You know, he's created Manchester City. He's It's his team. He's created them. You know, they were nothing before Pep Guardiola got his hands on them. And Arteta yeah. is doing a very similar thing to the Arsenal now. You know, as we said by somebody at the start of the uh, the podcast, it's nice to watch an Arsenal game without any stress. And I think we take that for granted now. And that's a good thing because we are playing exceptionally well. So, Danny, what do you think? Am I absolutely chatting absolute it's garbage? It's the only place in for any business in the world that has a structure where the people at the top, the chairman, doesn't earn as much as the players. The manager... It goes, the first, most important is the chair, the person who owns the club. Next most important is the manager. And then it's all the players. And in any other industry, the pl- the manager is on more than everyone below him. But in football, that's not been the way. You'd regularly see a manager would be on 10 grand a week while players yeah. would be on 60, 70 grand a week back in the yeah, day. Exactly. The manager should always be paid the most. Now, I don't think there's anybody at Man City who is on more than 500 grand a week that it seems, according to that list, that um, well, if uh, Gareth Southgate's on four million, that's a hundred grand a week. You times that by five to get twenty million. Where you times the the hundred grand by five, you get five hundred thousand a week. That's the way it should be. Managers should always be the highest paid, unless you're taking a risk on a, a, a short term manager coming in to manage something like Chelsea, Man United, Arsenal, Liverpool, something like that. Where you, if it's going to be short term, you're not going to come and say to Freddie Lundberg, "Oh, congratulations, you're taking over three games. You're now on four hundred grand a week." I thought I had a hot take, Danny, but I'm glad that you agree. I'm glad yeah. you agree. I'd be yeah. very interested to see what everybody else thinks 
about our very controversial opinion about a manager being paid it, uh, the most, if not the same, around the top spenders, uh, the top wage earners of at the club. Um, we've got another question here from Phil on YouTube this time. He's a busy boy. Retired early, Danny. Retired early. No, the government just pays me an absolute fucking fortune not to work because I don't bother. Oh, Although right. now, now that I'm 53, I'm thinking... I'm a fucking genius when it comes to technology. I'm wasted. I could be I could be working at B and Q now, pointing to people where the paint is. So oh, yeah? I might come out of retirement and go and work somewhere just for the, just to meet people and, and annoy the general public. I like this, Danny. Them. I like yeah. this. I like this. I'll I'm, be a I'm delivery well driver for, for, for Uber in, in the electric chair. Yeah, that's going to go down really stone well. Cold by the time, and if they live in a block yes. of flats, aren't they fucked? Got no chance, mate. You have to come come down and get your food. Hey, I'm gonna <laughs> eat it while I'm waiting. <laughs> So we've got a question from Phil. Are we are we doing a pre-match uh, pod for the buying game? I'm going to assume that we, that you are going to do that. We're back, we're we back on now. We're on. We're off the struggle bus. We're now on the glory bus. There we go. There we go. Mr. Boblex with buying shitting the bed. Could we smash them? Yes. They've lost, they've lost five yeah. game. They've lost five games this season, haven't they? That's the first time In they've the league, done that. They've since... lost six today. They lost three two to a a, a fellow Bundesliga side. That I've never even heard of, and I, I am. They've only just F- been promoted. They've only just FC been promoted. Hand in hand, them. so they only, have now yeah. lost um, six Bundesliga games. And if you go and have a look at their season results, they have. Oh, how about you give me fixtures when I ask the fixtures? You minge. I don't like it when the fixtures aren't. Here we go. Color coded. Loss, loss. Win, win, win. Draw, win. Loss, loss, loss. Win, win, win. Loss. So in their last fifteen games, they've lost six. And they're regularly getting players sent off. Um, they had back-to-back games before. Um, yeah, but to lose then Dortmund, go under Dortmund. The Yellow Wall, they beat them recently uh, last week as well. Six losses in a season for Dortmund, for Bayern. Oh, that's great. I'm all up for that. I'm completely up for it. Absolutely and utterly up for it. I say let's absolutely destroy them in the demise and the fall away of Tuchel's, Tuchel's uh, Bayern at Munich side, uh, the See, one that Harry Kane is. This comment from Peter, he's 70 now, used to be a footballer. A bit different to my £35 a week at Stoke City in the early 70s, although Tony Waddington earned less than um, oh, Hudson. I should know his first name, shouldn't I? Chris Hudson, I think it is. Tony Curry and Jeff Jeff Hurst, maybe? I don't think Jeff I'm going to assume Hurst it's Jeff both. Hurst. Yeah, I'm going to assume point. it being Jeff Could Hurst. Well be. I've got um, another question. I've got another question. Geeks of Muckleby. Thank yep. you for contributing a question as well. well welcome Lovely. to the pod. Um, how do you think the optics for our opponents have changed with regards to how they view the Arsenal? Danny, Worried. how have the optics changed? <laughs> Worried, nervous. Oh, I like that. I like that. They can't that. cope with... Our, 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 even Pep's now looking at Arteta and going, you you, you reinventing parts of football? No, that's what I used to do that. And Pe- Arteta's yep. going, hard times, bro. My word was going to be unpredictable, so that kind of goes into tie, entwined with what you were saying. Hard so. to break down, hard yep. to, to, to defend against. Uh, players, two players in almost every single position or players that can play multiple positions. Oh, I'm getting carried away again, Deke. Oh, I'm going to look back at this in six weeks' time when we lose eight games in a row, and I'm going to say it's all Sharp! Sharp! Don't say that. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it, Danny. Shut, shut, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth, as they say in Step Brothers. Oh, um, let's do let's do one more question, then we'll quickly go back to the chat because we've got loads of people talking to us, which we really appreciate. Thank you very much for all being here. So we'll do one more question. We'll go back to the chat quickly and get a final few questions, and then we'll end the pod. Trav, yeah. how are we feeling about Bayern? They're fully focused on the Champions League uh, after their latest defeat in the Bundesliga. See them 16 behind, points behind Leverkusen. I think that Arsenal are just going to rub salt in the wounds and we're going to yep. make them even more miserable, and they're just going to have nothing to play for this season for the first time in 12. Oh, wait, no. 10. They won 11 in a row. There we go. Yeah, so 12 years. Uh, 12 years, that was correct. So, yeah, 12 years. Unbelievable. So, yeah, I'm all for it for making it even worse. I'm up for it yep. completely. I think it will do them. Um, so we've got loads of people saying hey into the chat. Thank you all very, very much for being here. Peter Coulson, I read that Wenger insisted... He was paid more than the highest paid player. Yeah, this is what I mean. I, I'm glad my opinion and Danny's opinion isn't a controversial one because a lot of people are like, why are you wasting that sort of money? Because I tell you what, I'm a football manager, Danny. 
You get mm. paid pittance when you first start as a manager, don't you? Um, I like you, I'll do an Arsenal say for like ten years, and I'll get paid like fifty grand. Fifty grand a week. I'm, I'm just starting season fourteen with ABWFC. Yep. Thirteen consecutive promotions, twelve of which I won the title, seven of which were invincibles. I'm still on ten pound a week. I'm it, now I, playing in, it, in the the league below the Conference South. Exactly my point. Exactly, exactly my point. So yeah, you were right. Um, Alan, Tony, and Jeff uh, with the uh, with the names. So Alan Hudson, uh, Tony Curry, and Jeff Hurst. Yeah, that makes sense. Ray Anderson, Danny, we have only seven matches left in the league. We don't do doing, numbers at this pod. Are we you don't, doing? We don't know okay, cool. Danny got a number wrong. It's not just me. It's not just no. me. Oh, good god. Um, Mr. Boblex, we owe them f- uh, for the two five ones. We don't three in play. a row. The last three times we played them, each three, all three have been five one. I didn't know that. We don't talk about it. We absolutely don't. Rocky talk about wants it. me to answer his question in the that we've saved about. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll answer it, Rocky. We will go back to the questions now. We just wanted to jump over, and say hello to a few, to answer a few more just generals. <laughs> uh, we get it, Rocky. Calm down, <laughs> Bill. I never take notice of my football manager salary when I'm being really long term journeyman at a small club. I'll take the least amount of wages so I can have yeah. my wage budget a little bit more. Yeah. Um, that's just me being like really just over. And they the go, would you like more money to spend it on the assistant manager? And I always go, no, no. spend it on youth development. And they go, yeah. well, well, thank you for your input, but we're not going to listen. Yeah. We're going to give right. you, so we're going to give you some more yeah. uh, fucking loan managers. I'm like, no, oh. I don't want any more loan managers. Anyway, no. I digress. Geeks of Muckleby. Um, we will see the best version uh, of Bayern and they are a dangerous squad however if Arteta gets the team's emotional focus right our level is higher than theirs yep. um, I think I'm not Danny are you worried overall with the Bayern no not at all we'll, I'll be happy with a draw there and we beat them at home we could even beat them home and away because a little bit of history on Bayern they had a really decent manager who had uh, just won the league with them and they were top three in the league last season, and they sacked him. And he went on to be the Germany manager and has turned Germany around because they have had a, a rough time of it lately. And they went and got the ex-Dortmund and Chelsea manager, uh, Timmy, T- Timmy Tickles, Tommy Tickles. Tommy He's, Tickle. He is manager, isn't it? Tushel? 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 Tuchel. Tuchel. Mm, whatever, some combination of that. And it has not worked out. And now who are they looking like they're going to go for a manager? They're either going to go for the ex-Red Bull manager, uh, Nagelsmann, or they are going to... Or was Nagel's one they had before? Who's Probably. manager? Echo. Who's manager of Germany? Uh, talk amongst yourselves. It's Nagel's. Martina Voss Teckelman. Even, oh. even my Alex has gone woke. Okay. This told me the manager of the women's football team. Who cares? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's just bullshit. Oh, anyway, whatever. The point sticks. They want Good. to get the old manager back. They're a mess. Good God. Good God. Um, another question, um, Pandey. <laughs> Uh, what are your thoughts on Saka's recent performances? He's been off. Uh, his, uh, he's been off his game for the past couple of games, and that's got me a little worried. The thing is with Bakaya Saka, even when he's performing or underperforming, anyway, he's still got the confidence to put away a penalty like he did. So he's a guy that steps up in big moments in front of all those Brighton fans, giving him loads and loads of jip. He still put away a very convincing penalty. So even when he's performing or underperforming, sorry. He's still got the ability to go and make the difference. And that's what he did today. So I'm hoping that this little slump is obviously not a long-term issue and a short-term one. And I'm hoping mm. to see the return of Bakayo against Bayern on, at the Emirates on Tuesday. It's the equivalent of turning up to work just after you finish having a bout of the shits. He's, yeah. he's putting in a shift even though he's not up to it. Yeah, he's doing he's, the business. He's all he's Arsenal. Getting, exactly. He's getting on got quite so I'm not be there for you. I'm not completely, totally worried. Rudy, Arteta and Havertz at centre forward. A lot of times the players decide where they have to play. It's a very interesting comment, Danny. That's very interesting. Mm. Uh, you can have certain ideas, but you can see the cer- a certain relationships and how it all flows. Wow. That's a very um, that's a very uh, open comment from, uh, from Arteta. That mm. shows his hand a bit. That's probably... Okay. That's really a making bit things... of a nod to the players there. Yeah, he so he's says, giving a lot of credit to the players, yeah. It's a follow-up quote there. When it flows, you have to let it go. Let uh, it that's go. what it's that's what it's let that it is go. what's happening with Kai. The team is really comfortable with him there. Yeah. I love it. That is. Oh, I love this. 
I'm all for it. Injecting the brains, Danny. Injecting mm. the brains. I'm all for this. Mr. Boblex, Bayern seem to be having a really bad away from home this season. Um, hopefully this will be uh, good for the home game. We will have a clean sheet against them. It's going to be really... I, I always prefer to play the second leg at home. Yeah. But obviously it's yeah, not come to, to it's not come to light it's not come this, to fruition this particular way. But you know, um clean sheet is a must. Even if it's one nil, it needs to be a needs to be a clean sheet. One hundred percent we can't no away goals anymore, but it's the psychological It's of, exactly that. I, yeah, I know I know we got a clean sheet at your place, just think what yeah. we're gonna do to you at our place. It, it, exactly. So um yeah, it's extremely important. And uh, as I said, I'm not as worried uh as we once were, I think. Saliba and Gabriel will have Harry Kane's number on both uh, on both uh, both evenings. Oh, it would be glorious. He will, it would be an absolute clusterfuck for him. He's going to get beaten up by his England teammates and then he's going to cry. Where's that question from uh, Rocky? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Sorry, I don't remember. Rocky, so Danny... Yeah, uh, the Rocky asked, Danny, do you get 89 vibes? Uh, he asked, I was going to answer this, ask this question, but I think you were quickly Googling something for me, maybe mm. uh, wages. So, but Danny, do you get 89 vibes? I was born, I was about two or three at this no. point, so I've got no clue. No, I don't, because the 89 vibes were kind of last season because we've come from nowhere and a team of young players this time, it's like the 98 vibes. We've got a squad full of wonderful players. And we're playing great football, attacking football, keeping clean sheets. It's uh, the manager uh, was Wenger's um, second, first full season. He'd been there since the November the year before, the November '96. He did '96, '97, and '97, '98. Also, the last game of that season was at home to Everton. This season, last game at home to Everton. This team is full of young England players and young stars from all over the world, much like the '98 side. And uh, yeah. And I am fully confident, and that my favourite goal, my favourite season, my favourite game were all that Everton game, and that was my favourite Arsenal team because it had so many of the George Graham players in, and it had Wenger at peak Wenger, and it had so many wonderful players that then went on to win the World Cup. So it's just everything about that '98 team is why I loved football. But there again, also the '89 team, I think was more special, but that was a little bit more oh. What are they doing? I like it. it. I like it. I yeah. I've got no. I got no comparisons. I was. I was a whippersnapper at, at this point, so I've got no real comparisons. And when I was a little little lad, I liked football, but I was, you know, what I mean, I wasn't able to wasn't able to follow it to the degree that I was able to in my mid teens. That's when I really started to. When I was like fifteen, sixteen, that's when I really started to get really invested in football and it's been mm. uh you know i was always I, I remember going to the i remember going to highbury when i was a little lad with my dad and he used to tr he used to play uh seven aside football in the underground training center underneath the underneath highbury there was mm. a enclosed training area down there with a uh with a fake pitch and everything i remember coming uh coming back up to the car park and all of the loads of arsenal players started coming down the spiral stairs outside mm. the front entrance and my dad instantly stopped the ball I was kicking around with when I, I must have been about four five he grabbed the ball got them all to sign it and I instantly put the ball back down on the floor and started kicking it about again and my dad just <laughs> lost his shit so what are you doing <laughs> I was like play football why are those football? men writing on my ball what are, they all, what are they all drawing on my football for I just wanted to play football I didn't know what was going on so this is so it's been a it's uh, you know I've football's always been part of my life but I, I really started to invest in it oh, like, yeah from um this coming from Rudy says this it is coming from Ornstein and then he said this just before if you want to read it Mikel Arteta drove the Kai Havertz signing and the only and the German only wanted Arsenal despite interest from Bayern Munich and Real Madrid we were worried, Danny, weren't we, when Wenger left that we wouldn't have that pull? We've got that pull, I think, and then some now. Mm. I think uh, I think Arteta, what he offers, the, the project, the style of football, the way that we conduct ourselves on and off the pitch, it's a very likable place, and a lot of players want to come and play for us. So, um, yeah, I'm a big, big fan of how everything's going on at the moment, so I'm it's nice to hear that Kai Havertz had other suitors, especially mm. going back to going back to Germany to go and play for, because he could have he could have potentially been the signing instead of Harry Kane, maybe. So 
who knows but um yeah i'm all i'm all for it i'm all for it let's go let's go let's go um we've got another question here from patrick costing because there's one question here from geeks of mucklebeard one i'll leave that till last so i like yeah. that question um patrick carlson how much is chelsea still paying their sack managers who knows tens millions, of millions billions tens of millions it's it's a ridiculous number it's all very very silly but i'm all for it I, as More I, I, money I can't than many uh, S- south american countries are their their national export money Z. i agree I agree. Yeah, I'm all for it. You know, all it means is that uh, you know it's going to be a fire sale at Chelsea this summer. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm I can't wait. I'm all for it. So, uh, what else we got here? Um, sounds like Wenger talk FM Arteta yep. um, from from Arteta. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, and Phil, 100% Danny. I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, if it goes to the last game, it shall be either be at the game uh, of a pub nearby. Oh, what's that? I think he means in. Oh, in right. Front. Yeah. Okay, that's fair enough. Are you having a bad uh, day today, Phil? With your fat thumbs, you need to sort your thumbs I'm out. Put them on a diet. The, I am I supposed to read these things? Signing mm. rise, prove that Deeks. Exactly. Exactly. Well, yeah, you're. Com- yeah, you, you're completely right. You're completely right. Um, and then uh, I was there, ninety eighty nine, not ninety eight, and uh, and then uh, Pandey. Uh, if we win the league this season, I would like all the credit, please. My first ever Arsenal game was the first game of 2024, oh. a 5-0 Palace hammering at the Emirates. Excellent. Very nice. All right. So have you got any last questions? Put them in now. It's going to be a half hour this... show and it's been an hour and 21 minutes. Will you lot shut up? I've got, I want to play football manager. We've got long, one last question here from Geeks of Muckleby, yeah. which I really liked. You can sign three players and sell three players. Who comes and who goes to enhance the first team? Danny, do you three wanna... out are, are going to be Zinchenko. Um, yep. Jesus and Ramsdale, partly because okay. Ramsdale, they will get money, good money for all of those three. I love Ramsdale, but he's done yep. at the club. And right. the three that I'd bring in, well, there you go. Uh, I'd want a striker. I want a left back. But there again, with Yuri and Timber coming in, I know he's, he can play right back. He can play all the way across the back four. If he's going to be our left back, then we don't need a new left back because yep. he'll play there. And yep. so I, knew, I want a striker, a left back, and... Oh, what other position do we need? Cover on the right wing of someone who's capable. But you can't really have an understudy to someone who's 22, can you? Because if they're going to be decent, he's, probably, he's understudy. You're getting in, it's going to be probably older than him. Yeah. So I don't know, yeah. but that's what I'd like. Okay. I'm going to go with three different ones. I'm going yeah. to go with Nelson, sold. And we're going to... Uh, no, 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 sorry, not Nelson. We're going we're gonna to bring out Eddie. We're going to bring out Eddie. It, Eddie's the most important one. We're going to sell Eddie. Well, I think it's obvious that he's going. And the same um, as it's obvious Cedric is going. And we're going to sign uh, Gil Koresh from Sporting Lisbon. I would like to sign Gil Koresh. He looks just absolutely phenomenal. I'm a striker. I, and I want to see all these celebrations. I love this. It's not Gil Koresh, is it? Goy Koresh. Gil, no, it's Gil Koresh. It's Gil Koresh. I thought, he, I thought he pronounced the O. Did he? Oh, I, see, I went to YouTube. And yeah. I typed in how to pronounce it, and that's the, that's how it was pronounced. So, see if they would all have English names, our life would be bloody easier. Everyone's called I'm Gary trying, Dave. Danny. I'm trying. I mean, okay. Look at Ray. Ray's not English. It's called Ray Anderson. Well done, Ray. Trying. Thank your parents for us. Very easy to say. I'm, I'm trying, Danny. I'm trying. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nelson um, for Pedro Neto because um, we desperately need an alternative injured. option to Saka. Always injured. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe. Um, Maybe Frimpong for Leverkusen. He's had a great performance for, for Leverkusen. So maybe Frimpong then. Um, and then uh, this one's a random one. Party for Kimmich. You, I saw you retweet that the other day and you were full of the joys of spring when you I retweeted tell you what, that. If we you signed a bit excited. Kimmich, if we signed Kimmich from Bay- Bayern Munich, a little bit of sex we would leave <laughs> my urethra. Just saying... <laughs> I'm just saying, these are the dreams you have. If we signed Kimmich and he played it as, as our six. <laughs> I'm Kimmich. being cyberbullied by if I feel. Oh, really? Oh, that's not At least I'm not nice. wearing a silly hat. Oh, that's not very nice. Phil? Oh, Ray's name is actually Rainer Anderson. Oh. But it's At least I can pronounce it, Ray. Well, there we go. Well, there we go. Um, yeah, there we go. I think that's, uh, I think that's it, isn't it? I think that's it. Have uh, we got any other? We have got some more questions, but I mean, like Rocky's just put one in there. People, it's been nearly an hour and a half. It's going to be a half. I said to Deke, half hour show. 
let's get on with it. I've got an achy neck. I could possibly need a wee. I've had two boiled eggs, so that's never going to end well. You can see my, I'm you surrounded can see my by cat. cats. You can see my cat in the background just going, she's she's not entertained. She wants me to entertain her. So she's uh, very I've got upset Betty down crying. there. I've got Tom Tom behind me squealing. I've got Dora. She looks like she's melted onto the chair. I don't know where the other two are. <laughs> okay. Ember! I will doing? find stuff to do if you don't entertain me. That's exactly what she's doing. <laughs> Great game, guys. Incredible game. Incredible performance. We've got a huge month coming up with two Bayern Munich games in the Champions League with the possibility of us getting into the semi-finals of the Champions League. And then we can really start to have a little dream and try and get some uh, get some payback for the for the 2006 run that we... Uh... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Who knows, Danny? Who knows? But we're looking brilliant all round. Um, lots of rotations. No ma major issues at the club. There's only got, you know, Timber still coming back from injury, but we've got no real issues to worry about. We're going into the final leg of the season. We look strong. We look together. We look unified. We're scoring great goals. We're not conceding anything. Our goal difference is superior. City and Liverpool have got lots of, to worry about, and let's hope and pray that United get a result tomorrow so we can stay top of the table, and then it's all on us. But thanks to everybody that jumped in. Thanks for everybody listening. If you're brand new, give us a subscribe. Give us a like. Share us around amongst your Arsenal friends and family. We love talking about the Arsenal here. We try and be as passionate and, and positive as possible. But uh, it wouldn't be anything without all of you guys jumping in. So we really do appreciate everybody um, jumping in uh, during the live streams and post listening. So thank you all very, very much. Danny, do you have any final words for this evening? Don't have eggnog for breakfast. That's pretty good advice, to be honest with you. Is it? Is because it's quite thick. I've never had it. I don't know. I've oh, just okay, had eggs today, and I, I assume it is a type of plant. I've got no idea. I'm, I'm a carnivore. What would I know? That's true. You only eat eggs and meat. That's yeah. it. And Red Bull, apparently. Well, yeah. sorry, Monster, Monster, Monster. Is it? Yeah. Sugar free. I'm not an animal. There we go, there we go, there we go. Um, sorry, we're not going to answer any more questions, Peter. Peter, Dick, sort out my fantasy team. I have OD, Saka, and Big Gabby. Um, should I switch in Kai? I've just switched. I've literally just switched Kai in for Erdegaard. Um, so I've just done it. I, I, was, I should have done it weeks ago, but I've only just done it. We've got a, a right, nice run of games coming up with a double fixture week. Um, so I would definitely bring in Kai for Erdegaard. Uh, I've got Saliba. Kai, um, Saka and, and uh, Kai Havertz now. But anyway, I digress. Thanks for everybody jumping in. We really appreciate But we're going to go now and we'll see you for the pregame against Bayern Munich on Monday night. Goodbye. Bye. -bye. As soon as I scored that goal, I was fucking livid. Get down, dog. Splendid business. He nearly caught the bloody thing. What are you talking about? <laughs> So I was just eating a full quiche. Well, you don't often see them at it. So when you see them in the supermarket, they need to be swagged, microwaved immediately and get the brown sauce on them and bosh, Bob's your uncle. Never in doubt.